Hello, um, I'm going to go over how to bootstrap an EKS cluster and attach it to CodeFresh all in one fell swoop in a pipeline. Um, so recently Amazon EKS came out and I went to go play with it. And if you, if you go to uh, the create cluster here, you can see it says, you know, give us your role iron, VPC, subnet, security groups, all this stuff. Wasn't sure what to put there, um, so I found a great tutorial on the Terraform website that basically shows you how you can use Terraform to bootstrap an entire VPC with all the proper networking, as well as an EKS cluster. Um, so what I've done is I took the scripts that um, I found here and I've created a a GitHub repo, it's under codefresh.io slash EKS installer. And what this does is it will run the Terraform scripts from the Terraform demo. Um, I've also added some extra stuff to parameterize and make it so you can use different instant types and things like that. And um, from there, it will actually add it to your Codefresh account and make it so that um, it will show all your services, um, what's running in the cluster. Um, it also installs uh, the, t the Helm server-side component tiller. Um, so it really gives you this out-of-the-box um, uh, flow in kind of like less than 20 minutes, um, which is really nice, as well as uh, another pipeline that will tear down the cluster in its entirety and remove it from your Amazon account. Um, all of this is being done also by saving uh, Terraform as a state file called TF state um, that is saved in a CodeFresh context so that if you're trying to make an upgrade um, or change some parameter on the cluster, increase the number of nodes, et cetera, um, it, will, it will take the context out of CodeFresh and um, run your Terraform apply again so that you're able to, um, so that you have knowledge of the state of your EKS cluster. Um, and it's all, it's all done through CodeFresh um, context. Um, so here's kind of a look at the, at the pipeline YAML. Um, you can see I'm making sure that, um, these three variables, which you need to set in CodeFresh are set. Otherwise, nothing's gonna work. Um, and then I'm trying, attempting to load um, a state file from CodeFresh context, and I can show, this is a make command, but I'll show you the script that it's calling. Um, but if it's the first time running, we don't, we don't error out because we don't want to, um, that context basically hasn't been created yet. And then here I'm running in the um, HashiCorp Terraform image, running make setup, which I'll show you ends up running a Terraform apply. Um, and then you can see how I'm doing a, a set plus E here and exporting the return code. This is because if, the, if for some reason Terraform uh, fails um, and, we, and we run into an issue, who knows, AWS API, whatever, um, we still want to save that state file for the next time we come in, whether we're trying to retry the uh, install the cluster or if we're trying to tear it down, we, we need access to that state file. So you can see that I'm saving the state file here and I'll show you the script for this as well. Um, and then I'm doing an exit on the return code from, um, from this stage so that the build actually in CodeFresh will fail. Um, or succeed appropriately. And if it does succeed, um, I go ahead and create a couple extra Kubernetes resources that um, were kind of described in the Terraform demo. Um, and then I run a Helm init uh, that will install Tiller in the cluster. Um, I'll extract uh, a token from a service account that I'm creating. And then this token will then be used um, to attach the cluster to your CodeFresh account. 
and that's done here. Uh, I can show you kind of what some of these scripts do. Um, the add cluster script. Uh, sorry, no. The setup script is what I want to show you. Um, I basically run a Terraform init. Um, this will go and get like the plugins um, necessary, like the AWS provider. And then on a loop, um, I'm trying it three, time, three times in case, you know, there's some, there's some slow, slowness um, running Terraform apply and passing in these um, variables, which I defined name of the cluster, um, size of the cluster, so how many nodes, um, the region, it's currently only in um, US East 1 and US West 2. Um, but I had some issues in US East 1. I think they had too many people signing up. Um, and then here's where I'm actually using Terraform outputs to extract the cube um, information about the cube config to attach to, to CodeFresh. Um, so I wrote a blog post about this that you can find in CodeFresh.io if you go to the blog. Um, everything I'm talking about now is, is here. Um, so the first step, if you want to just uh, have a cluster right away, um, you don't even need to really look at what this is doing, um, but you can refer to that um, setup YAML file that I was showing you. And um, all you need are your AWS keys and decide on the cluster name. and um, it should all work out. So all you do is sign the code fresh, um, check this add by URL, um, and then you'll basically reference you'll basically reference the EKS installer repo that I was just showing you. Click next. I have, say I have a code fresh YAML. In here, we're going to reference that setup YAML. Um, that I was just showing you. You can see it's coming and getting it here and creating the pipeline. Um, before going any further, you want to make sure that there's no triggers um, attached to the pipeline. Um, as it stands right now, basically, if I were to push any change to um, this, the CodeFresh IO repo, um, you may inadvertently launch an EKS cluster, which is probably not what you want to do. So I'm going to delete that. Um, and then all I need to do now is come in here and add three variables. Um, the AWS access key ID and Press the encrypt button, the AWS secret key ID, lastly, the cluster name, and we will just call it a uh, webinar for now. Once that's done, all you need to do is press save and then click build. And this will begin the process of bootstrapping um, any case cluster uh, in your account. Um, so to note, this is defaulting to um, a cluster size of um, one node. Uh, the instance type is gonna be M4 large, um, and it's gonna put it in that US West 2 region um, if you want to, um, if you want to use more nodes or larger instances, um, you can actually add those as, as, um, as additional environment variables during the setup. So you can see now, um, it's running that Terraform apply, creating VPC, um, 
let's see what else, security groups, things like that. Um, and everything works very nicely together thanks to um, Terraform's uh, great, great blog post. Um, it looks like it's bringing up the EKS cluster now, so we can come and see, if I go back to my clusters, yeah, you can see this webinar clusters creating. And at this point, we pretty much uh, just sit and wait. Uh, it should take around, for the one node setup, it should take around 10 minutes. Um, it may be a little bit more for, for larger cluster size. All right, so about 10 minutes later, um, the cluster uh, has completed coming up. You can see altogether this step took um, 11 minutes, 54 seconds. Um, if I come to uh, back to my Amazon console, you can find that um, the cluster's uh, totally available here. Um, and then it saves that Terraform state file in the CodeFresh context. Um, creates the Kubernetes resources and uh, does a helm init um, and then adds the CodeFresh cluster um, to my account. And now if I uh, go to the Kubernetes uh, um, tab here, I can see that my cluster is attached to my account. If you look in the Kube system, here's Tiller running. Um, and then from here, I can, I can just go on and, and create things inside my cluster from other CodeFresh pipelines. Uh, if you want to, for example, um, increase the number of nodes in the cluster or change the, or, or change the instance type, um, it's as simple as coming here and running a build and saying add variable cluster size two, and then click build. And because the Terraform state file is saved in CodeFresh, it's able to only uh, do a diff on um, kind of what's changed in the Terraform um, variables and such, and only operate against the Amazon resources that um, need to change. In this case, I believe it's the um, auto scaling group um, desired size. Um, so yeah, if I, if I look at my um, Kubernetes cluster here, um, you'll see there's a single node. And uh, once this is done, it should show up with two nodes. So you can see it's doing the changing desired capacity and max size from one to two. And this shouldn't really take long at least compared to uh, the previous Terraform apply. So it took about a minute. Um, you can see it's saving that Terraform state file to CodeFresh context once again with the changes. And then if I go uh, to my um, Kubernetes um, cluster set up here. If I open this up, it should show two nodes and you can see this one's, you know, having some issues. Maybe it hasn't, it hasn't bootstrapped yet, but yet it is, it is um, part of the cluster. Uh, now uh, the cluster is running um, and you've created all these resources in your Amazon account, uh, its own VPC and all this stuff. Um, let's say you want to get rid of it in its entirety. Um, you can do so with a second pipeline that I've created called Teardown. And the Teardown uh, pipeline, very similar to um, the previous one for setup, um, it will load the state file. This time we, we, don't, um, we don't allow that to not succeed because we need that state file. Um, to do the terraform destroy command. And then I run make teardown and um, finally remove the cluster from CodeFresh account. And the add and remove um, 
cluster scripts are, are simply just uh, hitting the CodeFresh API. Um, you can see I'm doing this, this curl against the API clusters endpoint. Um, and the teardown script is just calling a terraform destroy. Uh, so in order to set this up, all you need to do is go back to um, your EKS installer repository, add an additional pipeline. We'll call this the EKS uninstaller. Um, We'll say use YAML from repository and we will refer to the tear, uh, teardown YAML I was showing you. Um, again, make sure there's no triggers. You don't want to tear down your cluster accidentally. Um, add your uh, AWS keys here again. Um, you know, you could, you could put these in a, in a code fresh context so you don't have to do this twice. And you want to refer to that same cluster name. So once that's done, all that's left to do is click save and click build. And this will, this will take down all the infrastructure that was um, created in the first step. Now you can see that the, the EKS cluster is starting to actually destroy. And if I refresh here, um, the webinar cluster is now in a deleting state. So after about 10 minutes, um, you can see that the cluster uh, was successfully torn down, including all of the um, resources associated with it in your Amazon account. And if you come here and refresh, you'll see that the cluster is gone from your account. Um, and I removed the uh, state file from CodeFresh context since the cluster is gone, everything's been successfully destroyed. I no longer need it. Um, and then finally, uh, I removed the cluster from my CodeFresh account. And if I go back to um, my Kubernetes um, tab here, you can see that there's no clusters uh, attached to my account. So that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Um, again, this is all uh, documented very well in a uh, blog post on CodeFresh.io. If you go here and click on the blog, um, this will walk you through everything that we went through today. Um, I encourage you to try it out and let us know um, if you have success. Uh, thank you.